So, you know, it's kind of cool, except that handicap accessibility sticker there kind of kills the original authentic flavor. And that uh, smart meter over there to the left with the modern electrical box, that doesn't really complement the, yeah, the vintage. So the place for vintage televisions, at least them for sale and that, has really become the Facebook marketplace. And this one's making quite a trip. We're actually on the road and we're in Tombstone. And I met up with Matt here from Utah and he picked this up for me in uh, Cedar City. I think the wind might be too strong. Uh, so wind or no wind, we're going to go with it because this is live from the road. So this is a 19, about a 1965. It might be a little bit newer than that. This is a Philco. And later in this video, I'm going to pull it out of here when I transfer it from his truck into my truck. I'm going to pull it out and we're going to, I think I brought a CRT tester. We'll do a little on the road analysis here, but first I'm going to talk about it a little bit and then I'm going to show you a little bit around this. I'm going to show you around this. That's what the editor's for, right? A little later I'm going to pull this out of here and we'll do a quick analysis on it. I even brought a, a CRT tester. But yeah, we got this off the Facebook marketplace. It was in Cedar City. I originally reached out and contacted uh, the seller and a gal by the name of Feather came back to me. And this is where the Craigslist aura starts, right? So maybe you could tell us how this went down. So Feather was selling it for somebody. And, and that person eventually kicked Feather out of the conversation, right? Yeah, yeah. I called him and he said that Feather was just a squatter at his house and was trying to sell his stuff on him. So then uh, I called him to go pick it up and he was hung over in Vegas and told me that, uh, that uh, a girl named Pepsi and a guy named Joe were at his house and they were going to give it to me. And so I showed up and, and uh, it was buried under about six feet of junk and Joe dug it out for me and Pepsi and Joe loaded it in the back and uh, here we are today. <laughs> what do you think? That's cool. <laughs> so yeah, we'll pull it out and, and do a little analysis. We're here to explore several mines. We're going to spend three days here, most of it underground. But uh, I'll show you a look around the town a little bit and we'll take a look at the mine tour that they have here and maybe some other stuff. Really? Okay. Yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to analyze this TV as soon as I can get access to it here. <laughs> oh, they're almost done. It's a soldering iron and tools. Okay. Model 17 MT89. <laughs> All right, this has gotten out of control, I think. Okay, well, this is kind of promising. Uh, it has all the screws in it, which is a good thing. And I was just taking a peek in here. And this is a hybrid set. This is a roundy, but it's a hybrid power transformer set. This is late. This is later than uh, what I thought. So what makes this uh, TV unique? Well, this is 
this is the first kind of mainstream style of color with the round tube and you know they went to a rectangular tube after the after this and this is this was made well into the era when they had started mass producing rectangular does that make sense mm -hmm. so. so this has transistors in it back here it's a mix of tubes and transistors. It's called hybrid. And usually back when these were being made, they were all two because they were er they were early to mid 60s, but this could be late 60s, maybe even early 70s. See, like I said, I brought the CRT tester. So we'll check the picture tube and see how good it is. But yeah, this is a later model. This is not You follow what I'm saying, right? Am I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a yeah, later model. It's kind of a throwback almost. Yeah, yeah. A retro throwback in its era. Yeah. So and it's not a lot of these TVs were licensed by R, from RCA, so they were clones of RCA designs, and this one does not look like a clone. It's very dusty. Are we clear? Did the donkeys go away? Yeah. Are we safe? So this checks the condition of the uh, the guns inside the picture tube because the picture tube is kind of the heart of the whole thing this right here and so it'll give us the three readings for the strength of the of course as you you put more hours on the CRT it it burns the the guns off and it gets they get weaker that's why TVs the picture gets kind of dim and blurry and lazy as they age. Even modern TVs? Well, no, not LCD or LED, but yeah, CRTs. And CRTs lasted almost forever when they were... Uh, sure, is it measuring the bridge? How deep is it? Um... The shaft's down at 200 feet, I think. It's all stoked. So you can see here, there's three the three colors, red, green, and blue. And the red is, they should all be up almost between, at the very top, point, point 0.9 to 1. So the blue is like stone dead which is kind of weird. It's just totally dead. Wow. So I'm going to let it run for a minute. I apologize for the wind noise and all the donkey activity and other weird stuff in this video, but at least it's not just another boring vintage television video. We're trying to spice it up a little bit. So I've had the CRT tester before I left the house. Uh, I think, as I said earlier, this set was on the Facebook marketplace, which is where there's been tons and tons of uh, vintage televisions popping up. I actually got another one I picked up in Phoenix on the way out here. A uh, friend Matt picked this up, a fellow mine explorer. He grabbed this from Cedar City uh, from kind of a junk house with some oddly named people and I had it arranged so I grabbed the Beltron on the way out the door convenient suitcase style so it's kind of interesting that we have it's been running now for about oh 15 minutes and we have like the green is pretty hot the red is mediocre and the blue is just like nothing and of course, I can't see the filaments out here to see if they're glowing. So I'm going to bring the voltage up a little bit. I'm going to go up real high. 
And yeah, the blue is coming up a little bit there. So, and when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. So it appears that one, two, three, all three guns are working. So it appears that we got a dead CRT here, at least a dead blue gun. And when they even get this weak, you can't rejuvenate them. There's just nothing to bite onto. But anyway, uh, I have that black CTC-15 that I picked up in Utah. Uh, that Montgomery Ward CTC-15 that I picked up on the last trip. And um, I think I'm going to sacrifice that and pull the CRT out of that and put it in this. Because this is a fairly unique set. It's small. Check that out. That must mean solid state. A high, well, the door is missing, which is unfortunate. You can kind of tell the door has been missing by the amount of dust inside. It's a, it's a very small TV, but yeah, let me show this other one I picked up in Phoenix. So I grabbed this in Phoenix on the way out here and uh, another Facebook market listing and I almost despise spy book Facebook give up all your personal data book whatever you want to call it but there sure are a lot of vintage TVs on there and this is a Sony 5-307 and these are cool It's interesting, Anaheim. I wonder if this is originally from California. Probably the owner is another person who vacated California because of the ridiculous taxes and all of that. But anyway, this is like a 5-inch or something portable. And I've restored some of these in the past. And the thing with these is they have to be totally recapped. They have these have garbage electrolytics in them. You just have to change them all. Um, so there you go. These will be upcoming videos. And yeah, we have the technology to download the Sams out here. So it looks like this thing is uh, 1967. 1967. So, 1967 Philco Roundy. Blurry. Hybrid. And a 60s Sony Portobile. This is the underground tour. And while we're here, we're going to be checking out several mines. Supposed to be a lot of miles of tunnel. This is all real old stuff. Pre-pneumatic, pre-hydraulic, pre-motorized, all hand dug, hand jacked and blasted. I like this old water heater. Oh, yeah, I kind of had that. We... Uh, that was so cool. Yeah, with the coils of the coils yeah. inside. Isn't it cool? I've I That's actually took pride to work built, you know. Well, I I actually I worked at a building that had one of these. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you, bro. I love the old primitive gas valve. Not very efficient. they're doing is they're swamping the, the uh, entrance points and then the drug cartels bring everything across to the middle. You know, there's not much. We're one of the main hot spots. So it's getting pretty, pretty rough getting back like it was back. 
about eight, nine years. So sanitized. <laughs> I just got that up and put that in there. That's um that's actually still has the foam insulation in it for the dynamite and everything. That's wow. pretty cool. So we're going to have a debate about this thing. We're going to have a debate about this or car versus or cart. <laughs> they're they're or cars, right? Well, because in modern times you daisy chain them together and pull them out with an electric mule, right? It's like it's not a train cart, it's a train car. Anyway, All right. I like how you have it lit. Seriously, the... Yeah, I placed all the halogen and the LED in it, rearranged all the lighting in it, really. I think but it's really not, you have it... Overdo it, but it accentuates parts, you know? Right, exactly. You have it lit with, like, highlights, not really... That drift there goes right out our front gate, all the way up the street, across the highway to about an eighth of a mile on the other side of town. But... It also has a piece that goes into the Crystal Palace Saloon, the basement of it. That's blocked up in 1965 when the high school students figured out how to get to the liquor cabinet through the mines. <laughs> uh, it also went to the million dollar stove. It was a room that's 300 feet long, 200 feet wide, and 100 feet deep. That's amazing. And one foot from the road above it. They found that out on the man and the ice wagon and everything went through. Now the man drove off the side. The, horse and the wagon went completely out of sight. They came down here, found the horse. He was pretty banged up, but okay. They walked him out through two miles of drift again out of here. This one here will go to the tough now. Okay. Yeah, you fall right through the little hole back there and you end up in the tough one. But we have another way to get in Yeah, and you showed me the maps of this complex. Lots of interesting gobbing. So, Robert. While I'm rolling video on this, any, anybody that visits Tombstone can come down here, right? Right. And what's the fee right now? It's $15 for adults, the military, law enforcement, senior citizen is 12, kids 8 to 10 or 5, under 7 is free. So that's about a 45 minute fully narrated tour. It's cool. It's well lit. It's it's like uh, lit for good pictures and video, just the way it is.
I like the lighting, I really do. So we're going off the beaten path here a little bit, and that's mostly what we're going to be doing later in the dedicated videos. This is just a little bit of extra for the TV video. Caved right there. Yeah. I'm gonna go first in case I can't get my hand work. <laughs> you want me to go through there? If you want to. Is that what we're looking for in there? Yeah, I just wanted to see this gate and stuff down here. This is what I wanted to see right here. That looks like an ore chute right there. Yeah, it does. Looks like it's, come on, hold on to your flashlight. That looks like it, an ore chute that's, but that looks like it's plugged. And that, I can't tell. So when did this mine operate? In 1879. It started in 1878, but they went into full production in 1879. Actually closed down in 1898. Yeah, this wood, in a dry environment like this, this wood almost becomes petrified. It Underground, it does not degrade. You can see the square nails there. And... Look at the amount of effort that was put into these joints. Axe. Yeah, probably with yeah, a knife. Yeah, it's all assembled with square nails. Check out here from all the where the miners' candles are. You can see it's all pockmarked. From yeah, there. exactly. That's from candle holders yeah, being candle holders. stuck in the. I mean, imagine doing this with this type of precision with the primitive tools in candlelight. I mean, we're totally spoiled now with these. <laughs> and yeah, the wood, the wood just, just, and look at it, it's clear wood too. There's no knots in it. This is clear old growth lumber. All this lumber is brought from the Huachuca Mountains, 26 miles away. Oh, well, there's the there's a knot in it. But for the most part, it's totally clear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Same with that. Uh, I wonder if that was... Same with that number two back there. Yeah, number two. I wonder if that was uh, is authentic or if that was like recreation type stuff. Mm -hmm. Deep, real deep. Gotta love the dust storm. Oh, those are definitely authentic.
so do horse and carriage usually have PA systems and yes that was a that was a thing back then yep I love all the processed lumber and the modern stucco. Really gives it that authentic. Yes, you can probably pay to go ride that thing there. Oh, a steakhouse. It's got advertisements on it. That's cool. Yeah, I'm thinking this is where we're at. It shows that sub level. All right, so we're going to start here. How many miles do we have under here? Uh, Robert? It's supposed to be 320 miles. 320 miles of tunnel down here to explore. So we're going to start out and uh, document this, and then we'll get to the TV videos in the next couple weeks. Monday morning at 7 o'clock a.m. Los Angeles time. And maybe we'll do the Philco next week or the Sony. Who knows? Okay, this is a 1960s civil defense refuge station. We're about 350 feet underground. And this one's been pillaged a little bit, but what these had is they had Geiger counters, medical kits, sanitary kits, um, water, and survival biscuits. And the way this worked is these were the water jugs, and when you finished, when you drank all the water, you'd put this seat on top of it and use it as a commode. There's the uh, 1960s toilet paper. And I've seen quite a few of these. There's quite a few of these in the West, these underground civil defense survival shelters. Un unfortunately, they've most of them have been pillaged and the contents have ended up at flea markets, but... So in the 60s, this is where the designated chosen few were assigned to come should something have happened. So this was all water. Like I say, the medical and sanitary kits have been pillaged out of here, which is too bad because they were cool. Most of them had, I think, Geiger counters, Geiger tubes, as well as uh, scintillation crystal indicators, which used a photomultiplier tube in front of a scintillation crystal. And when the little radioactive particles hit the scintillation crystal, it uh, produces a little speck of light. And the photomultiplier tube picks it up, and that's where you get the kind of static Oh, here's part of one of the medical kits.
Yeah, about 350 feet down, and I don't know, we're about two hours to get to this or something like that. Anyway, that's a look at a underground civil defense survival shelter. Absolutely no fear whatsoever. And these are these are wild. <laughs> 